Hi everybody, Alan Denman here, writer, novelist and filmmaker. Uh, welcome to Storyteller, bringing you thoughts and ideas, insights and hopefully inspiration on the art of storytelling. Whether you're a writer yourself uh, and you want to get better, you want to understand more about the process of telling a story, or whether you are a reader and a film goer and you don't have a particular desire to tell stories yourself, but this will help you to understand how story works because it's a bit like looking at a magic trick. You know, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Or if I kind of go to a, a theatrical analogy, you know, you have what's on stage facing the audience, then a lot of other things behind the scenes. And today's episode, in this episode, I'm going to reveal to you probably what I think is the biggest secret of storytelling. Um, and I was going to call this episode Passing Through the Proscenium Arch. So let me just hold up my teaching aid here. And you can see here you've got um, uh, like a proscenium arch on stage and you've got people watching. Now, here's the thing. How do you get people through that proscenium arch into the world of the story? Because something happens. Just think about this and observe it in yourself. You're reading a novel or you're sat in a cinema seat watching a film and within two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, you've, something's happened. You've, you're transported. You've entered magically uh, another world. You have crossed through the proscenium arch into that other world. Um, so the question is, how does that happen? Is it just a natural phenomenon or are there techniques? And the answer, of course, is yes. There are key things that you can do as a writer to get people across the threshold and into the world of the story. And this is vital because why is this the biggest secret of all? Because if you don't get this right, then the reader or the film watcher uh, does not enter that world and you as a storyteller have failed because they're still outside. They're not inside the world of your story. And so here's the key. And this is my view. You know, you, you other people may have different theories, but this is my experience just by observing myself and also in my own writing and what I'm trying to achieve there. Um, and I'm going to begin with just reading an extract from... Uh, Raymond Chandler's book, uh, The Long Goodbye, one of my favourite crime novels. And uh, just inside it is a description of the main character. Listen carefully to this. And in particular, what you're looking out for are moments of relatability, details that make you interested and think, oh, this sounds an interesting guy. Uh, I admire that kind of trait in somebody um, or it may not happen. It may leave you dead because there's no saying we, what one person will attach themselves or relate themselves to a protagonist and somebody else won't. So there's no right or wrong. There's no guarantee in this. But I'm going to read this to you. And uh, this is Philip Marlowe, the detective, describing himself. I'm a licensed private investigator. And have been for quite a while. I'm a lone wolf, unmarried, getting middle-aged and not rich. I've been in jail more than once and I don't do divorce business. I like liquor and women and chess and a few other things. The cops don't like me too well, but I know a couple I get along with. I'm a native son born in Santa Rosa. Both parents dead, no brothers or sisters. And when I get knocked off in a dark alley sometime, if it happens, as it could do, to anyone in my business, nobody will feel that the bottom has dropped out of his or her life. So in writing circles, in writing theory, this is known as a character handle. And very briefly, it's like an overview of this character and what are presented to us uh, in this are certain key traits, all right? First of all, one that sticks out to me is 
um, he's a lone wolf, all right? So he's an outlier. He doesn't really fit into the system too much. Um, for myself, um, I'm interested in lone wolves. I think a lot of writers are lone wolves, outliers. Um, he's also very kind of honest and, and frank. Look, you know, I'm an ordinary Joe. I like women and liquor and chess and a few other things. So he's not making himself out to be any kind of uh, an angel or morally superior or anything like that. He's a private detective doing his job. And also there is a kind of stoic um, pride or stoic acceptance where he says, look, you know, I, I don't have any brothers or sisters. My parents are dead. A couple of cops think I'm OK. But basically, if I get killed doing my job, nobody's going to give a damn. Um, and it's not self-pitying. There is a sort of stoic uh, quality to this. So now you're presented with three or four traits here, which you as the reader can either relate to or you say, mm, no, I'm not really interested in this. And I, I, in my view, it doesn't matter what the genre is, whether it's romance or crime, um, supernatural, horror or whatever, you know, the what gets you over the threshold into the world of the story is emotional connection to your protagonist, all right? So these certain traits rouse certain emotions in us. Uh, I'm a lone wolf, you know, uh, cops don't like me, I've been in prison, you know, but he does sound kind of moral, so we kind of admire him a lip, quite possibly. Um, and I think also his honesty, that's another admirable quality as well. So there's certain things that are admirable uh, about this guy, but he's also a lone wolf, so we're, we might be a bit curious. So that's a, another uh, principle of engagement, one might call it, um, is... Uh, curiosity what is this man like what goes on in his head what's kind of how's he behave in the world that he's in you know is he going to be corrupt probably not um but what world is he in and 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 how does he behave so we're kind of maybe curious about him as well i may also feel sympathy for him as well so here's the thing is that you know i believe that when stories begin, the aim of a good story is to present the protagonist in certain ways, certain traits of the protagonist, and uh, invite the audience, you know, invite the reader to engage with the, that character in some way. And here's the very interesting thing, which I will talk more about in the future. Once emotion is aroused, it starts to stimulate the subconscious. The subconscious kind of imagines more. And we, so this world of imagination, this area here, this special dome, this we, we, within our skull, I call the imaginarium. And this is where we have our own kind of virtual world inside our heads. And if so, if you rouse the emotion, it stimulates the subconscious and it makes it easier for us to imagine that world. So um, I think this is uh, really, really vital. And, and I kind of one of the things that really stands out to me is, is many years ago when I was teaching at college, I staged and directed a children's pantomime. It was a sort of a disco version of Cinderella. And we invited lots of kids in. Um, it, it was real, really fun and quite funny. And the stage set was very bare. And it began with Cinderella and a mop. And she's sweeping and cleaning the floor, sweeping. And she's, she's very upset. And, you know, I have to stay behind. I'd love to go to the ball. And my, my sisters really, you know, boss me around and may force me to do this and I uh, you know I feel awful and within a minute or two a little girl in the front audience pipes up and says don't be upset Cinderella now here's the thing about kids kids are much more emotionally open than adults and they respond faster 
and they will enter a story world much, much faster than adults will. And adults, you know, if a story's good, adults will do the same thing. But this little girl instantly was identified relating to Cinderella and her emotion was roused and she was in the story that we were presenting it was in, in, in a sort of pantomime form. Um, so that tells me a lot. So, so what are the, the principles of engagement? And this is, if you're a writer, this is what I would say. Think really carefully about the qualities of your protagonist that you're presenting in the first page, uh, first paragraph even. You know, and uh, think about uh, how are people going to respond? Are they going to feel something? And there's, they can feel things in different ways. So I've suggested some of them already. Sympathy. They, you feel sorry for the protagonist. They're in a terrible fix. They're in a corner. Um, or you might feel admiration, like Rocky in the film. You know, he's a kind of nobody, but he has his dream. He's going to become world champion, you know. And you have to also fear for somebody like that because they are also blinded by their own dream of success. Um, so here we've got sympathy, uh, admiration of somebody who's very courageous or really is taking a chance. Luke Skywalker in Star Wars where he gets his call to adventure. Do you want to come, do you want to stay on this backwater planet or you want to come and have a space adventure and become a hero. That was a, a true hero's journey. Um, that's, that film is based upon the hero's journey story model. But there you are. So we admire somebody like that who says, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to take a chance. So that's very important. Fearing for a character as well is very important. So it is so important how we feel when the protagonist is presented toward to us. Um, and I, I think this is it's kind of for now all I'm going to say. I'll probably look at openings of other novels and stories uh, next week and go into this in a bit more detail. And I would also challenge you, um, you know, if you're watching something tonight or if you're reading a book tonight or you may have already started the book, go back. Go back to when that character is first introduced, maybe page one or page two, something like that. But it should be pretty early on. Um, you know, some stories may begin by presenting the antagonist first. And we know the antagonist is dangerous, a nasty piece of work. And that sets up a fear. Uh oh, this, we're not going to be asked to follow this character. But when the protagonist does appear we're going to be pretty worried for him or her, you know. Um, and, of course, the younger a, a character is, the age of your character is very important. You know, the, the younger they are, automatically we think they're, the more vulnerable they are and we're more likely to feel sympathy, support and fear for them. So this is how you get across that, threshold of the proscenium arch you create a, present a character and you present certain key qualities or key aspects of that character that rouse emotion and then there comes a point you know in a in a story well told where the reader or the viewer will say okay i'm in i'm going to follow this character i'm going to stick with them and see where they go. We don't necessarily know what the story is in the first few pages, but we're prepared to follow them. And if you can do that, if you can get your reader or audience over the threshold inside the story, then you have succeeded as a storyteller, number one. Because if you don't get them inside, if you don't get them through the proscenium arch, then I'm sorry, but as a storyteller, you have felt. doesn't matter how good your English is, how decorative, how fluent, everything else. If we don't care for or relate to the protagonist in some way, then 
we're not inside the story and I'm afraid you as a storyteller have failed. So look out for this in whatever you're reading, whatever you're watching, look at the that first moment that you see the storyteller. And uh, just probably one addendum to this is look at uh, long running series, you know, and, and you think, why do we keep coming back to characters and they can run for one season, two seasons, three seasons? Because um, the audience or the reader has kind of fallen in love with or so engaged with that character, they're going to follow them, not just for one episode, not just for one series, but multiple series, multiple novels with that same character. So... Yeah, I hope that's useful. And that, in my view, is the biggest secret of storytelling. Have a good week.